Oh, that's sappy. Boy, he took a lead, didn't he? Oh, I love it. <laughs> Boy, he really jumped, didn't he? That's pretty. And that's it's a cold good out there. I mean, that's cold. They had to break the ice. <laughs> that is really neat. Boy, you know, a lot of times your labs like that, uh, when they've been trained so much to go after birds, they're not nearly as eager to go after a dummy like that. You know? You'd be surprised that these guys just love to retrieve. That they don't really, really care that much about what it is. That is great. Let me tell you what we're doing. We're down in Camden, South Carolina at Del Campo Kennel, talking with Delma Hazard, a famed Labrador Retriever trainer. <laughs> and we're going to set in on a training session today. I think it's going to be a real treat for you. What do you think, Delma? Well, I hope so. Sounds like fun to me. <laughs> Sounds good. So you stay with me. We're going to have some good action. I'm Hank Parker. <laughs> also today, we'll travel to Arbuckle Wilderness and meet what may be the most elusive mountain climber in North America. And coming right up, Hank will show us what can happen on some of those small ponds if you know what to look for. Man, that fish is strong, I can't believe. It's strong. There's a bird. One, two, three, four. Sorry I missed your call. Leave me your name and your number and I'll get back to you. He's gone fishing. This is Hank Parker's Outdoor Magazine, featuring the first sportsman to win both the Bassmasters Classic and the title Bass Angler of the Year, Hank Parker. These fish are right in there on that little lip. Golly, oh. well. That's what you get for having 15 rods in there. I have never caught fish as strong as that in my life. All right. Well, they're just hanging on that little lip down there. I'm gonna get the boat back, get on top of them. That little dam comes around here. It's flat all the way up till you get right there to the spillway and then that little ledge starts and that's three fish right here on this little ledge just in about the 30, 40 yard area in about eight or nine foot of water right where it makes the break and quality fish. I mean some real fighters. Oh, that's what it's all about. That's probably the most fun size fish to catch, that three to four pound fish. Yeah, that's probably that's pulling a fish pound for pound, if you'll catch. And they're not playing around. I mean, there's no question about when you get a hit. This morning, they seemed like they just wanted to peck the bait a little bit. They didn't really want to take it. You get a peck and he wasn't there. These fish, they're hitting the bait and they're holding. There's no question about whether or not it's a good fish and whether he's going to hold it. All you got to do is just set on him and he's there. Super fish. Me another one. Little ledge there is strong, I tell you. This little ledge is a lot like what you have here on this shoreline. Over here where it contours and makes the break and comes down. It's a little drop in there. It goes from about two or three foot of water and then makes a pretty steep drop or pretty steep drop down to about uh, eight, nine, ten foot of water. The fish seem to be right where the break. There he is. Oh, I missed him. Whew. Boy, that fish about took the rod out of my hand. So I can get him just right there where it makes a break. Same thing I was just fixing to say about where the, the sharp break starts, where it's two, three foot, right where it breaks down to eight, nine foot of water. That's probably the prettiest sight known to man right there. I've never seen anything that excites me as much as that right there. Look at them work. That is incredible. 
Oh, threw out there deeper in the pond right by the spillway here. Got me a hit. Oh, little feller. Oh, you can do better than that. I think my first one was a little bit bigger than him. I don't think his mouth is quite as big as the other one. This was out here deeper. I'm gonna try some more of that. He wasn't very big, but he was in about 10 foot of water. That other fish I caught was about four foot. Got to be another one. A little lip runs out there. That kind of a flat comes in here. A little lip, a little edge comes down about eight or nine feet. That's always a good place, I think. One of the most consistent places when you're fishing a small lake like this is to fish where you have the spillway or the drain on the dam end of the lake. Oh, there goes the geese. Canadian honkers. Oh, good fish. Oh, good fish. Man, that fish is strong, I can't believe. How strong on the boat. Boy, I can't believe how strong. Pretty fish. Boy, I tell you what, these fish are healthy. Good, chunky fish. I'll tell you what, I don't believe he could have got away. Put the hook in him. That is a great fish. I'll tell you what, you can't beat this. Hey, don't go away. We'll be back with a little more outdoor fun in just a minute. All right. Dan, how many mouflons have we moved so far today? We've got three of them moved, and we've got two Two more that we need to move. Good night, Dan. Look at those flags. Mm. Why couldn't you pick a little warmer day to move Mouflon? Well, I'd like to, but we really need to get them out of there before they uh, start uh, breeding that new group of females. All right. Good. right. Here, let me drive. Okay. Okay. The. Uh, They're also calling for snow this afternoon. What kind of snow? How much snow? Well, quite a bit of accumulation overnight. Boy, if it comes, we've got to get these sheep moved if we don't get them. Next, we'll join Jerry Hagee and set out to locate a pair of mouflon rams. And a little later, we'll catch up with Hank and champion dog trainer, Delma Hazard. You know, it's amazing at the uh, facilities you have here for training. Well, you've really got to be set up right, you know, if you're going to train for trials. It just it takes a lot of work. And it takes a lot of organization. You've got to have the help, and you've got to have birds. That's incredible. They have to have a lot of stamina to go through all this intense training like this. I'll tell you what, let's go see what they'll really do in the field now. OK. You know, whether you're a tournament fisherman or a weekend angler, a good fishing partner makes all the difference. Now mine, she's a little better looking than most. That beauty's a lot more than just skin deep. She's tough, and she's got what it takes to consistently give it her all. And she's there when I need her. Best of all, she's a ranger. Ranger boats. We still build them one at a time. Go for it with Ryobi. Tough, dependable reels for any kind of fishing. Ryobi. There's never been a better reason to go fishing.
Ryan, this is the only lure that'll catch fish on this lake. I got half a mind not to let you fish it because you don't have extra strong trilene on that reel. Don't lose it. The only place this lure is going is down a big old hog's throat. Uh-oh. Doggone it, Ryan. I'm gonna show you why you need trilene. It's up to 20% stronger. It's the line the tournament pros use, and it's the line that set 400 world records in just 12 months. To be perfectly honest, I can't tell you I catch fish every time I go fishing. And I can't tell you that every time I use fish formula, I catch them. But I can promise you, on the slow days, it definitely helps me catch bigger fish. I'll stake my reputation on it. And so will these other well-known fishermen. Hey, let me tell you something. Fish formula works. Under all sets of situations, it'll help you increase your odds of catching big fish like this. There's always something exciting in the world of animals happening over at Arbuckle Wilderness. Here's my friend Jerry Hagee. We we'll want to be very, very alert. There's only two in this compound, and this is one big compound to find two sheep from. Is there anything on your side? Nothing yet. Well, we're climbing at a pretty good rate here. We're getting in some pretty high country. Good night, Dan. They're over here. There's a herd right over here, and there is the ram that we've been wanting to be with these ewes. He's, he's around the one, two, three, four, five ewes, Danny. That is the largest mouflon sheep for his age of any mouflon anywhere in America. I hope he stands. He's just magnificent to look at. It must be 200 feet straight down right there, and they're going to go right off the top of that thing. Just as sure as we sit here, if we keep her spinning. It's not often you get this type of close-up, you know? No, it's not. Your idea of moving these other full curl rams out of here and using this one for a breeder and this whole you herd is one good idea. If genetically we can establish that in a horn structure, we absolutely can have one of the finest or the single finest mouflon herd in America. There's not another ram like that anywhere, Danny. Look at the base of his horn coming out of his head. It's nearly, it's, it looks uh, disproportionate. It's too large. And look at the spread on that and the arch on it and see how that goes out. Now when that comes in as it does on a mouflon right next to his neck and it starts that curl and he gets old enough to have full curl. My gracious, what an animal. Yeah, he's probably two or three years younger than the uh, rams he's been running off. How interesting. Up oh, there. There they go. It's going right up the hill. What a scene. That, that has to be the biggest ram I've ever seen. What makes, I don't know what makes that so exciting, but boy, that's magnificent. Look at him go along that ridge line. You know, those things were originally stretched back in the Stone Age. They stretched, I understand, from Hungary through southern Germany, clear into uh, the Mediterranean. And then, then they started disappearing, and they were only left on the Isle of Corsica and the Isle of Sardinia. 150, when they started counting, left on Corsica, and 400 on Sardinia. It's a wonder they didn't become completely extinct. Yeah, really it was. If it hadn't been for conservationists, uh, you know, guys like us, in Europe, they would be extinct now. Wouldn't be any left but they brought them into to Germany primarily in Vienna and Austria and they began to raise them and now that's where the biggest concentration there's some I understand there's some 7000 now worldwide from those original 550 now that's really here's here's a case where again conservationists and hunters preserved another species boy Danny there they go they're going over the hill you know, I'd like to sit here just all day and watch them. But we've got to find those mouflon. We've got to get those other rams out of here. Yeah, we need to get started. It's already beginning to snow just a little bit. Really is. Look at him, leading those females right over the hill. I could watch him all day, but we've, we've got to get those rams moved if we're going to before the snow gets here. Let's get after it. Next week, 
Jerry and Dan will catch up with those two elusive mouflon, and what happens will certainly surprise you. But in a moment, we'll join Hank and witness a triple retrieve by man's best friend. He is fired up. He knows what's about to take place, honey. What we'll do is snake him. Snake him. Come here. We've got a test set up here, Hank, and um, what we're going to do is, is um, I'll show you kind of this would be a little bit of like what you would get in a field trial situation. Right. This is going to be mark retrieves, and the dog has to be steady. Watch all three birds down, and remember where all the birds are. When I At last, the ultimate in fish finding technology, Humminbird's LCR liquid crystal recorder. The depth sounder that bridges the gap between flashers and charts, combining the best features of both. Now the most advanced concepts in sonar are combined with state-of-the-art microcomputer innovations to bring boaters and fishermen more features and more fish-finding versatility than any other depth sounder on the market. LCR, LCR the creation, creation of a, of a new, new generation, generation from Humminbird. There are three ways you can try moving closer to these fish. With a gas outboard, with a noisy electric, or with a quiet Minn Kota electric. To a fisherman, the choice is black and white. Minn Kota, the quiet power that catches fish. Outdoor Magazine. We'll continue in a moment. You know, whether you're a tournament fisherman or a weekend angler, a good fishing partner makes all the difference. Now mine, she's a little better looking than most. That beauty's a lot more than just skin deep. She's tough, and she's got what it takes to consistently give it her all. And she's there when I need her. Best of all, she's a ranger. Ranger boats, we still build them one at a time. Go for it with Ryobi. Tough, dependable reels for any kind of fishing. There's never been a better reason to go fishing. Demo, who we got here? This is Snake Eyes Double Nothing. He's a field champion, amateur field champion. Champion. He's the son of my first dog, Dude's Double Nothing, and he's been the sire of two national derby champions. How about so, that? Well, he's got a pedigree, doesn't he's he? He's our main man around here in these days. <laughs> so he's going to be our star for today. <laughs> I'm going to do this triple retrieve with him, and I'm going to have the middle bird thrown first, and then the left-hand bird, and then the right-hand bird. And he'll stay, watch the birds down, and then retrieve all three birds. Retrieve on command? On or, command. Okay. All right. Let's okay. see it. Okay. Snake. <laughs> now in competition, dogs can do, on these marks, they can have as many as four birds out at a time, so that they, it's called like a quadruple retrieve. Um, the birds will, can be, obviously they are judged equally, supposedly, on land and water, so that you'll have the same type tests on water. Sometimes the birds can be as far as 250 yards away. Is that right? That is. Oh, he's got it marked. Snake! 
You just send him on command by his name. Exactly, and he has to remember where these birds are. A dog is judged according to his accuracy. Um, the rule book reads the less cover disturbed, so that they should know, you know, the more direct route there obviously is the best job. You know, a lot of people won't realize how difficult that is unless you've trained some labs, and that's a tremendous dif distance. What is that, about 225, 250 yards, maybe? Um, sure, something like that. Yeah, that's a long retreat. <laughs> that's good. About 150 yards. <laughs> Remembering exactly where this bird is. Mark. 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 Snake. And sometimes I'm the impressed. tests get so big that they can take as much as, you know, 15 minutes. And some of the water tests can take 20 minutes. A mm -hmm. dog has to really remember, you know, and stretch their brains. Good boy, Snake! Good boy! That is neat. That is really neat. Now, Snake uh, will be 10 years old this spring. 10 so years old. Obviously, to be in this kind of, he's like a big kid, you know, and just a terrific athlete. And his I wonder how many of those dummies he's carried back across the field in 10 <laughs> years. <laughs> he wants to go again. He is ready. Now we're going to send him on a blind where he doesn't know where the dummy is, where That's it's been right. placed, and we'll and send in, him. And in competition, what they do is they'll, okay, they'll, okay. <laughs> he's, he's still wanting to go. Well, um, hop, 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 In competition, they'll um use the marks and they'll place the blind retrieves on past them so that it's almost distraction to have to go, you know. Making it more difficult. Exactly. But, yeah, exactly. I can see that. It all becomes very much a game of um circumstances. All right, let's, uh, this is the hardest retrieve for him to make, really, out of all that we've seen today. Now, I realize there's some obstacles This is what takes the training, and right. this is what separates young dogs from older, all-age dogs that are trained to, to sit on a whistle when a whistle's blown and to take hand signals so that they can be kind of mechanically manipulated to where the bird is hidden. Okay. And that's what we're going to do right now with Snake. This is our you blind do it? retrieve. Come on, okay. Snake. He's done well so far. I give him a perfect score. Sit. Now, when I do this, I'll kind of tell him dead bird, because that's kind of what they're trained okay. on to look out after. All right. Dead bird. Dead bird. Here. Here. Dead bird. No. Dead bird. Here. Heel. Sit. Heel. Heel. There's a lot of precision that goes into this. Heel. I can see that. Back. Great control, super control. You gotta be close, isn't he? Close. Good boy, oh, good fantastic. boy, snake! Fantastic. Now what was the little uh, jewel whistle, a real quiet whistle? That was just come on in. Oh, you knew he knew where it was then. Well, I could tell. I actually let him get a little deep of it, bad on my part, depth perception. But and then when he turned around, I realized that he was, and so I made him sit there just for control. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, sneaky. Okay. Okay. Oh, Playtime. Playtime. That's the best. Ron, this is the only lure that'll catch fish on this lake. I got half a mind not to let you fish it because you don't have extra strong trilene on that reel. Don't lose it. The only place this lure is going is down a big old hog's throat. Uh-oh. Doggone it, Ron. I'm going to show you why you need trilene. It's up to 20% stronger. It's the line the tournament pros use, and it's the line that set 400 world records in just 12 months. To be perfectly honest, I can't tell you I catch fish every time I go fishing. And I can't tell you that every time I use fish formula, I catch them. But I can promise you, on the slow days, it definitely helps me catch bigger fish. I'll stake my reputation on it. And so will these other well-known fishermen. 
let me tell you something. Fish formula works. Under all sets of situations, it'll help you increase your odds of catching big fish like this. Hank Parker's Outdoor Magazine, where each week Hank Parker, one of America's finest sportsmen, will take you on an entertaining journey into the great outdoors. Join Hank and his friends for some of the finest fishing this side of heaven and meet some of the world's most amazing animals to boot. Hank Parker's Outdoor Magazine. Now don't you go away. Hank will be right back. At last, the ultimate in fish finding technology, Humminbird's LCR Liquid Crystal Recorder, the depth sounder that bridges the gap between flashers and charts, combining the best features of both. Now the most advanced concepts in sonar are combined with state-of-the-art microcomputer innovations to bring boaters and fishermen more features and more fish finding versatility than any other depth sounder on the market. LCR, LCR the, creation the creation of a, of a new, new generation, generation from, from Humminbird. Humminbird. There are three ways you can try moving closer to these fish. With a gas outboard, with a noisy electric, or with a quiet Minn Kota electric. To a fisherman, the choice is black and white. Minn Kota, the quiet power that catches fish. It's a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of hard work, but it looks like your work paid off for you. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> what is that, the 1981 National Amateur Champion? That that's correct, and that won. was won by this dog, Dude Stubble Nothing, who was my first dog. And that was his grandson, or his son. His son. We got to see today. Well, that is great. We really enjoyed it. Delma Hazard, a super dog trainer and a super lady. Thanks for being with me today, Thanks, Delma. Hank. I, I appreciate it. it. Thank you for being with me. God bless you. I'm Hank Parker. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Hank Parker's Outdoor Magazine, sponsored by Fish Formula. We fool Mother Nature. Humminbird Depth Sounders. Minn Kota, quiet power catches fish. Ranger Boats, we still build them one at a time. Ryobi, there's never been a better reason to go fishing. And by Trilene, extra strong. Yeah. Hank, this is Tom. You told me to call you when they're biting. <laughs> they're biting. Gone fishing. 